Hi everyone and welcome to my live creative time today. My name's Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. It's great to have you all here. Thank you so much for being with me. Um, if you are watching live today, you will see a little red live button up the top there in the top left hand corner. You'll know that you're watching live with me today. Um, so thank you so much for being here. If you're watching the replay on Facebook, thank you so much as well for being here. And if you're watching over on YouTube, thank you to you as well. And if you are watching over on YouTube, make sure that you have subscribed to my YouTube channel. You'll find the um, subscribe button down the bottom here on the right uh, lower corner below the, the screen here um, over on YouTube. So be sure to click subscribe and then if you click on the little bell icon, um, you can choose how you would like to be notified whenever I upload my videos. So while everybody is jumping on, I'm going to bring this up on my iPad, which um, I just have to wake it up. It's gone to sleep. <laughs> so let's just bring that up. And actually, uh, no, I don't want to install that now. Let's install that later. <laughs> Facebook is telling, uh, sorry, my iPad is telling me that it needs updating. So isn't that frustrating? It always happens at the wrong moment. Uh, so all good. All right, we'll get out of that and then I'll find the right screen while everybody is jumping on. As you're jumping on, say hi. Who have we got here today? So we, we may have a quiet day today. We'll see because it's actually a public holiday today. So a lot of people might be away um, or still be celebrating Easter with their families. So I hope you all had a lovely Easter um, over the weekend. And there we go. There it is. All right. So let me just do a flippity flip so that I can see all of your comments. There we go. All right, let's see. Oh, there they are. Awesome. Great. Hi, Kathleen. Great to have you with us today. Hi, Amanda. Great to have you as well. Who else have we got? Rose is here. Hi, Rose. Rose said she hopes I had a restful Easter. I did, actually. Thank you very much. I had... Um, some time off on Friday and yesterday so that was really nice and had a bit of a sleep in today too I thought I'll take it easy today we've got a couple of hectic days coming up with um, painters coming in um, to our house so the next couple of days is going to be pretty hectic and early starts and things so I thought you know what I'm gonna sleep in today and um, so that was nice as well oh Fran is here bonjour Fran lovely to have you with us thank you for joining where are you joining us from Fran let me know in the comments I'd love to know where you are coming from um, oh Kathleen says happy Easter to everyone happy Easter to you as well Kathleen thank you Monique's here too hey Monique how you going great to have you with us today fantastic we've got a few jumping on that's great. Um, yeah, it's always, I was a little bit unsure if I was going to go live today because being that it's um, the Easter long weekend, I thought there might be um, a lot of people who won't be online today, might be out and about or have gone away. So I thought, will I, won't I? And then I thought, no, I will because it's always great to um, bring you some um, creative inspiration and um, I thought we might play with some of the products that are retiring very soon. Um, we'll have a last hurrah with some of those products. And um, then probably from next week, I'll be focusing more on the new products that are coming in the new catalog. So let me just... Um Oh, Monique says um, it's good that she can watch because she's not working because of public holiday. Well, that's the other side of it too, isn't it? Some people will actually be off work today, so they'll be more available to watch. Hadn't thought about it from that point of view, Monique. But thank you for pointing that out to me. That's very good. Oh, Fran is... Now, I don't speak French, Fran, so I apologise, but I'm trying to read what you wrote uh, let me see if i can do translation can i do translation i'm not sure if i can do translation as the as the um comments are scrolling uh leon and france i'm not sure if i've pronounced that correctly but it sounds like you're coming from france so that is fantastic thank you so much for joining us it's great to have you with us 
I learned a little bit, a very little bit of French when I was in year seven at school. So that was a really, really long time ago. Um, yeah, just very, very basic. I think we did like one term of French, um, but I mostly did um, German. I studied German for four years. Um, but yeah, I love the French language though. It's so, such a beautiful language. It sounds beautiful to speak it. So great to have you. All right. Well, um, I want to tell you about a couple of things. So firstly, if you haven't already seen this, we have a brand new annual catalog that is coming out really soon. My customers should start to receive theirs very soon as well um, because I've already ordered them for my regular customers. And so they're coming, coming to you direct from Stampin' Up. I've already ordered them to be shipped to you, so you should be receiving them soon. But if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you're here in Australia, um, I would love to give you a catalog. I have some here already um, on my shelf. So if you would like one of these, please get in contact with me and let me know. I would love to send you one of these beautiful catalogs. There's so many gorgeous new products coming out. It's very exciting. Um, I showed a live unboxing last week. So if you missed my video, feel free to go back and watch my last week's unboxing video of some of these beautiful new products. Um, but yeah, just gorgeous. So all of the products in this catalogue are currently, um, uh, or some of them are available to demonstrators at the moment. So if you'd like to get your hands on them right now, you can join my team and you can get your hands on some of those beautiful products right now. But otherwise, if you're a customer, um, you'll be able to get your hands on these products from the 3rd of May, uh, which isn't very far away. It's only a couple of weeks away. So very exciting. Um, now, because we have the new catalogue coming out, of course, it's very sad when we say goodbye to our old catalogue. So this is our old catalogue, which is retiring on the 2nd of May. And because this one is retiring, there will be some products that will carry over, but there's a lot of products that are going to be retiring with this catalogue. And so Stampin' Up! currently has a last chance product sale. And so we're going to be playing with some of those products that are retiring today. Um, so that I can show you some of these gorgeous products and some of them are reduced in price up to 50% off So if you haven't already checked out the last chance products be sure to check those out You can go to my online store um, to have a look at those and you can find my online store two ways You can go via my blog and click on the shop button there or you can go to my website and click on the shop button there Either way, you can get through to my online store. So go there have a browse around see what's on special um, if you had a wish list of any of those products from the current annual catalog that's retiring, um, be sure to grab them before they are gone because some of them have already sold out. Some of those products, they're already gone. Now, if you are shopping with me, be sure to use my April host code. There it is there, D7S72GE6. Hopefully I've said that around the right way. Yes, <laughs> so I'm reading it back to front on my screen. Um, any orders over $50 will receive a thank you gift from me as well. And this month, as my thank you gift, I have an amazing um, tutorial bundle and it has 35 tutorials in it, which are amazing. And they're tutorials that have been designed from demonstrators all around the world, including myself. I did a um, 3D project, which is in that tutorial bundle. So you can get that when you shop with me. Um, and spend over $50 this month in April. Otherwise, if you would like to purchase it, if you are perhaps, or if you, if you already have a demonstrator of your own that you're working with, or if you're a demonstrator, or if you're in another country, you can also purchase it. It's $28 Australian dollars um, if you would like to purchase that. So I did post about it over the weekend. So if you want to go back after my video today, if you want to go back and scroll over my um, posts over the, over the last couple of days, I did post it on, what day was it? Saturday. I think it was Saturday I posted or was it Sunday? No, Saturday. I think it was that I posted about my tutorial bundle or might have been Friday. Friday or Saturday, last couple of days anyway. So go back and check that, but feel free to get in contact with me. Um, and also too, I did post about it on my, um, you'll find it in the tutorial section on my blog as well. So you can have a look at it there on my blog if you want to check that out. Just click on the tutorials button and um, that'll show you all of the tutorials that I have there on offer at the moment. 
Um, we also have our mini catalog available at the moment still too. This one's going till the end of June. So this one is going to be around for a little while longer. Um, and in fact, I have a class coming up, which I will be, uh, advertising tomorrow. Um, I've got one more project to complete today or this evening, and then I'll be able to promote it tomorrow. So look out for that. It's using some of the product from the mini catalog. So that will be my next class. I'll post about that tomorrow. So lots happening. Um, oh, you're going to Lyon in France. You don't, ah, oh, you don't speak English. Oh, well, you can just watch today, Fran. <laughs> that's okay. If you don't understand what I say, that's okay. You can just watch if you like. It's lovely to have you with us. Thank you. Merci. <laughs> All right. So um, if there's anything that I can help you with or if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Now, as I mentioned um, about the new catalogue, if you would like to get those new products now, as I said, some of these are available to demonstrators right now. Not the entire catalogue, but we have a selection, um, some of which I showed last week. Um, but yes, uh, by joining Stampin' Up, it's only $169, but you get to choose $235 worth of product. And that can be um, the brand new products that are on pre-order for demonstrators from the Stampin' Up catalog, uh, from the, the new catalog. It can be any of the um, retiring products that are still available. It can be from the mini product. It can be our kits collections, anything you like up to the value of $235 and you only pay $169. And then, as well as that, you get free shipping on that order, and then you get an ongoing 20% discount on all of your Stampin' Up! products. Now, that already sounds amazing, doesn't it? But not only that, but you get to join a wonderful stamping crafting community. So we're, some of us are stampers, some of us are scrapbookers, some of us love to do 3D um, off-the-page projects that are neither scrapbooking or card making, um, mixed media, all different sorts of things. So there's so many of us and we would love to welcome you into our wonderful community. So if you would like more information about that, please feel free to get in contact with me. I'm happy to answer any of your questions. And of course, there's no obligation. Even if you're asking questions, don't feel that there's any obligation. Um, but it's great to answer those questions or to ask those questions so that you can then make that decision if it's right for you um, to join my team. So feel free to get in contact with me if that's something that um, sounds interesting to you. Alrighty. So let me just move my catalogs over there and let me catch up on some comments here. All right, well, what have I missed? Have I missed anything? No, I think I've all caught up. That's awesome. So as you're jumping on, feel free to say hi. Um, I love it when you chat with me and um, we're going to get crafting. So we're going to keep the chatter a little bit shorter today and get the crafting done. I've got a really um, simple project for you today, which is fairly quick and easy to put together. It's a great layout and you can use it for any of your designer series papers um, and you can use it for with different stamp sets and all different sorts of things. So um, how about we get creating? So I'm going to cover up the camera and I'll tip it down to the desktop. So just um, stay there. Don't go anywhere. I cover it up so I don't make you dizzy because I don't want to make you all dizzy. So bear with me. Here we go. Okay. So I'll flip those screens and I'll just get the camera ready. We'll re do a bit of readjusting. Okay. Tighten everything up nice and tight so that we don't have the camera falling during filming. There we go. And we'll adjust the lights and we'll see how straight I got it today. Every week it's a challenge to get it straight. So we do a little bit of tweaking here and there just to get it nice and straight for you all because otherwise it would be really annoying to watch the whole video with it crooked because it would drive me crazy. So I figure that it would drive other, pe other people crazy as well. So we'll get it nice and straight. There we go. That looks pretty good. And let's move these down and straighten these up for you as well like everything to be nice and straight. 
there we go all righty so let me show you what we're going to be playing with today we're playing with a few things actually we're playing with some products that are carrying over and some products that are um, retiring um, I'm just going to grab my catalog and I'm going to show you so this is the um, the old catalog the one that's retiring so I just find it here we go all right so this is the um, may actually I'll turn that plastic cover over to the back so that that doesn't reflect too badly on the light so this is the um, May 2021 to April 2022 annual catalog so this one's going to be um, retiring actually on the 2nd of May this year 2022 um, but we're going to be using some products from here and we're going to be playing with the beautiful um, designer series paper from the in the wild suite so in the wild suite has got um it's got stamp sets dies sorry it's got a stamp set dies um the designer series paper and the embossing folder but i think the embossing folder has actually sold out already um i don't have the stamp set and the dies but we can still play with the paper so that's what we're going to do today we're going to play with the gorgeous designer series paper and i love these big cats and when I saw this paper, or when I when I look at this paper, it reminds me of the song um, Eye of the Tiger. Because you can create tigers and cheetahs with this because you've got the, the different um, patterns for the, the big cats in the stamps. And also printed on the designer series paper, you have the different big cats. So, but I am going to be using um, the tigers today and thinking of that. Um, song eye of the tiger i won't sing it for you <laughs> because you don't want to hear my voice um, singing but anyway but these are the beautiful papers so as you can see i've chopped these up now the great thing is i put a sticky note on here so that i remind myself these papers are currently um, discounted by 50 percent so currently this pack of papers which is 12 by 12 and you get it's called in the wild designer series paper and you get 12 sheets and this pack of paper is only $10 at the moment, which is amazing. So let me show you some of the papers in here. I'll just pull them all out. You can see I've chopped into these. So I've got all my bits and pieces in there. I keep all of my scraps because I often use them. They, even these little ones, I often use them for decorating the inside of my um, cards. So, all right. So let's have a look and see some of these patterns. So this is the front side and this is the reverse side of this paper with the tigers on it okay and of course they do come in 12 by 12 but i've cut some of these down so if you're wondering why some of them are large and some of them are small that's because i've already cut them um we've got this gorgeous one here as well and the other piece of that is the one we're going to be using today actually which i've already chopped i've already chopped a big cat out of there as you can see so that's the reverse side that's the front side and I'm going to sneak that one to the front because I need to use that one then we've got this one here and that's the reverse side of that one there this one's got the cheetahs on it and we've got this one and this one so that's the reverse that's the front And then we've got this one and this one. This one I've already cut. So that's the front, that's the reverse. Then we've got these beautiful cheetah paper here. And um, this is the other side, which I've already cut because we're using some of this one today. So isn't that really fun? So you can, if you don't have the stamp set or the dies, you can actually fussy cut or hand cut um, these images out as well. So, um, yeah, you don't have to have the stamp set and the dies, which I don't have. And I'm actually going to be using um, just a different stamp set for the sentiment today. So let me show you the card that we're going to be creating today. This is the one that I've designed for our um, creative time today using that beautiful designer series paper. So I've just fussy cut the tiger here and just added some of the other designer series paper um, the sentiment that I've used comes from 
the Beauty of Friendship stamp set. And this one's actually going to be carrying over into the new annual catalogue. So, um, yeah, so this one isn't, this stamp set isn't retiring. It will be carrying over, um, which is great because I love this. But the dies that coordinate with this stamp set are actually retiring. So um, it'll just be a standalone stamp set in the new catalogue. So if this is one that was on your list, be sure to check that out because the, um, the dies are actually not carrying over. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm also using some of the ribbon that is retiring. So this is the um, Evening Evergreen Chevron Weave Ribbon. This is a beautiful ribbon. I'm sad this one's going actually. And I'm not sure if you can see the texture. If I hold that up close to the camera, if you can see the texture in that, it's got a really beautiful chevron um, weave texture in it. That one's retiring. It was $10.50 and it's currently reduced to $8.40. So that's a really good saving on the ribbon. So we're using that one and put my sticky note on there and the gems that i'm using here i've got the cinnamon cider gems there but these are from the um 2020 to 2022 in color square gems and these ones are retiring as well they were 14 dollars, and they're now reduced to 8 dollars 40 and they're still available at the moment and these are the retiring in colors so these are the ones that are leaving us, but they coordinated beautifully with um, the paper. So I've used some of the cinnamon cider ones. So there's a few um, things that are on special for you. And then for the dies, I've just used the rectangle stitched dies or the stitch. They're now called stitched rectangle dies. These ones are carrying over. Um, and so these ones will be available in the new annual catalog. Thank goodness, because these are one of my most used um, dies. I love these ones. So there you go. So there, oh, and the other thing that we are using as well, which is also retiring, is the um, 2021 to 2023 in color shimmer vellum. So this vellum is gorgeous and it comes in the in colors that are retiring. Oh, sorry, this. Sorry, this is the 2021 to 2023 in colours. These in colours are staying, but the, the shimmer paper is retiring. So the colours are staying. The shimmer paper itself is retiring. It was $21 and um, currently, I've got this upside down, currently it is $16.80. And you've got these beautiful, hopefully the camera can pick up that beautiful shimmer in these papers. So you've got... Um, evening evergreen, soft succulent, pale papaya, fresh freesia, and polished pink. There's the one, two, three, four, five. There's the five colours there. So there you go. And they've got that beautiful, gorgeous shimmer in them. They're absolutely gorgeous. And they are vellum, so they're opaque. And um, yeah. But they're really pretty. So we're going to use some of that today too because I've barely touched it, to be honest. I bought it quite late, um, quite late in the piece. And now it's retiring and I thought, I've got to use it up. <laughs> All right. So this is our card. So um, let's get started and I'll show you um, how to create this card today. All right. So I have got all of my bits and pieces and I'll give you all of the measurements as we go as well. So that if you would like to recreate this card, um, you'll have all of the measurements that you can um, create it. Um, Amber, my um, assistant and moderator, she's popping up all of the codes for those products for you that are retiring. So that if there's any of those retiring products that you would like, you've got all of the, um, the codes in and the prices in the comments here um, on uh, YouTube, we will pop those in the, the comments below the video as well. All right. Um, oh, hey, Helen, how are you? I didn't see you jump on. Sorry, I've been chatting away. It's great to have you with us. Um, I have had a great Easter weekend. Thank you. Yes, we had some lovely family time yesterday, had a lovely barbecue outside, and um, then we played some games in the evening, which was a lot of fun, some board games. So that's always super fun. So yeah, it was just a lovely day. 
All right, so let me give you all of the measurements here for all of our pieces. So we're going to be starting with a card base of Evening Evergreen. Um, so we work here in Australia in um, A4 cardstock. So this is half a piece of A4 cardstock. So this piece measures 21 centimetres by 14.85 centimetres. And we've scored and folded that at um, 10.5. Then we've got some of this gorgeous designer series paper and I've used this sort of Aztec type design within the Cajun craze. And this piece measures 14.45 centimetres by 10.1 centimetres. Then we've got a piece of this gorgeous um, leafy um, design. Um, now I started with a piece that was 13 centimetres by 9.5 centimetres and I die cut that with my stitch rectangle dies and I'll show you which ones I've used. Should I move my case out of the way? So I've used the second largest, the second largest um, die for cutting that one there. Okay, so that's the second largest rectangle. There we go. So that's that one. And then we have a piece of Merry Merlot. We're going to cut this into a banner and I'm going to show you an easy way to do that. So this piece measures 4.4 centimetres by 10.1 centimetres and then we're going to trim to create a banner. Then we've got two pieces that we've die cut with the fifth largest rectangle. So that's that one there. Um, and we've cut two. I've got a white, just a basic white piece. And I've got a piece of the um, shimmer vellum as well in the evening evergreen. Um, and that's so that I can layer them on top of each other just to make that shimmer really pop, that evening evergreen really pop. Okay, so we've got two of those. And um, so they started at 10 10 centimeters by 6.5 centimeters and then die cut and then we've got the tiger paper let me grab the tiger paper back out again this one here and we're going to fussy cut one of those tigers from this paper so we'll do that together and then what have we, what else have we got with the evening evergreen ribbon so this measures 18 centimeters and then we've got a sentiment label here as well, which is using the, the smallest narrow um, rectangle, stitched rectangle die. Okay, so we've got one of those there as well. And I just do die cut that from a scrap basically. Um, so you just need a piece big enough to um, fit that die. Okay. Alrighty, so let's get started. So I've um, pre-prepared a lot of these items just to make it a lot quicker for you. Um, but first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to fussy cut our tiger. Now, on our sheet of tigers, this is the one that I used for my first card. Now, I don't have a duplicate or a second one of him on the paper, but I do have all of these other ones that I can choose. So I can choose a different color. I can choose the same color. Um, I actually like this one that's lying down. So I think I might choose that one and fussy cut him. You could choose one that's sitting up if you wanted to, but I really wanted to fill that um, the width of that shimmer paper. So I think I'm going to use that one. You could choose a different colored one as well if you wanted to. Um, this one's the same tiger, but just in a different color. And this one's the same as well, just in a different color. But I really like the colors of this one. So I think I'm going to fussy cut this one. So we'll start with that. Okay. So let's get our paper snips. Now I'm just going to chop into this paper and cut him out. I'm just going to cut around him roughly to begin with. I believe that the dies that coordinate with this suite actually do cut out these tigers as well. So if you had the dies, or if you want the dies, um, you can use them to cut out these tigers. All right, so this is this one's a fairly easy shape to cut out. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put my glasses on so that I can see what I'm cutting out. <laughs> I'm at that age now where, you know, 
need a little bit of assistance to see what we're doing. So we just easily cut this out. I like that these um, tigers are fairly easy shape to cut out. So if you're not one that likes fussy cutting, this isn't too much of an intricate um, design to cut out. And a tip for you, when you are fussy cutting, if you just keep your scissor hand fairly still, just open and close the blades of your scissors, obviously, but you're turning the paper with your opposite hand. So I'm right-handed, so I'm holding my, my paper snips in my right hand, and I'm turning the paper with my left hand, which gives me better control of um, cutting around an object. So this is nice and um, nice and easy. And when you're cutting out um, images, it's great to leave a little white border around the edge. Oops, let's just round that off a bit there. A little white border around the edge of your image. And there you go. If you wanted to, if you had a craft knife, you could go in there and cut out that section there around um, his chest. But I'm not going to worry about that today. I'm just going to leave it as is. So that was pretty quick, wasn't it? There we go. All right, so we've got our tiger ready to go. Now we can put together all of our components of our card. Oh, actually, let's create our banner first. All right, so this one is 4.4 um, centimeters across. So if I grab my, um, my ruler and I'm going to measure halfway. So I'll take it to the bottom and I'm going to measure 2.2 centimeters, which will be right in the middle. Actually, let me turn it over to the other side because I've got larger um, lines here. So 2.2, and I'm going to put a little pencil mark there. Okay, so you probably can't see that on the dark color, but I've just put a little pencil mark there in the center. And then what I'm simply going to do is I'm just going to cut up to there. And it depends on how deep you like your banner. You might like a really deep banner. You might like a, a more shallow banner. I'm just cutting up there about... Oh, three quarters of a centimetre or so. And then I'm going to take my scissors from the corner, the corner tip, to where I have cut that there in the centre. And just snip that out like so. And then we'll take it to the other corner. You can even flip it over if you need to. And snip. And there we go. We've got a bannered piece. Isn't that nice and easy? Really simple to um, create your, your banner. So you can do that with any um, size cardstock, any length, any width. Um, just create that, that banner really easily that way. So that step is done. Okay, so now we can um, pop together our layers. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to construct some of these layers. I'm going to put aside my card base. I'm going to construct some of these layers together first because we want to wrap our ribbon around this layer before we adhere it to the front of our card. So I'll bring in my multi-purpose liquid glue and I'm going to put a bit of glue on the back of this um, leafy design designer series paper. And we're just going to adhere that in the center of the Cajun craze, sort of Aztec design on that paper. There we go. Okay, so that was nice and easy. Then we're going to adhere our banner. So this one's a really quick and easy card to put together. And as I said at the beginning, you can do this with any of your designer series papers. You can use this same layout. So we want that lined up to the top of our designer series paper. So I like that with the um, multi-purpose liquid glue, we have that wiggle time so we can line that up. Let's get that nice and straight as well before that adheres. Here we go. Okay, so we'll push that down like so. And then we're going to take our ribbon. I'm just going to grab some glue dots. I like using um, the mini glue dots to adhere my ribbon. So we're going to use some mini glue dots. And oh, this roll of glue dots is nearly out. I hope I have enough for today. I'm going to pop a glue dot on the end of each, oh, sorry, on each end of my ribbon. Oh, look, I've got a glue dot right there on the edge. Didn't see that one before. There we go. 
and then I'm going to pop one around about in the middle here where that's going to overlap, overlap on my banner. Now my banner is, um, I didn't tell you the colour of that one, I don't think, that's Merry Merlot. And I love Merry Merlot, it's a really beautiful colour, it's like a deep wine colour. Um, but I think it doesn't get enough love, it doesn't get used enough. But it's actually a really beautiful colour. Alright, so we'll pop that down there, we've got that glue dot just sitting under there, so that will hold on to the banner. And then we're just going to simply wrap the ends around. We've got those glue dots on the ends there. Let's get that straight. And we're going to wrap that around and attach at the back like that. Okay, so nice and easy. So that's the first step. All right, so now this can go down onto our card front. Okay, so let's turn that over. And this time I'm going to use a little bit of um, tear and tape because I like to add tear and tape when I'm go when I've got um, ribbon that's wrapped around the back. And I'll show you why in a moment. I'll just pop down this tear and tape. Stampin' Up! has got some uh, lots of great adhesives and it depends on the type of adhesive that you like to use. So I'm just going to lift up a little bit of that, a little bit on the end there, and I'm going to take this designer, uh, this, oh my goodness, I'm going to take my tear and tape and apply it to my designer series paper going over the top of that ribbon, which will help to um, adhere that part of the car, the, that part of the designer series paper down flat. Because if I didn't apply adhesive over the top of that ribbon, then that part is going to sort of sit up a little bit off the base. And I like my cards to sit nice and flat. So that is why, in case you're wondering, why is she using all these different adhesives? They all have different purposes. There we go. Okay, so now we're ready to pop that down onto our card front. So I'm going to take that piece off first, just off the top there. And I'm going to line this up. Let me move over here a little bit and line this up and get that straight. Now we've got a two millimeter border. I've um, cut this to have a two millimeter border around the edge. I like a little two, two millimeter border. I'm just trying to get that nice and straight. And then adhere that top part. And then we can remove the rest of the backing pieces from our tear and tape. If you're not familiar with the tear and tape, it's just double-sided tape. It's six millimeters wide and um, it's a really, really strong adhesive. It's great as well for if you've got lots of layers that are going on top, it's great for that. Great for 3D projects as well um, because it's a really, really strong adhesive. So when you're using tear and tape, you want to be sure that you're adhering um, where you're putting your tape that you're sure that that's where you want to adhere your element because it is a very strong tape so it is hard to remove it if you need to. All right so there we've got um, the base of our card ready. Now these two pieces we're going to adhere those together. Now because this is vellum um, you'll probably know that with vellum often you can see the glue through it or the tape um, or the adhesive through the vellum. So I'm going to show you um, a little bit of a trick to um, adhere these two pieces together without being able to see the um, adhesive. So I'm going to use my silicon craft sheet and I'm going to use my multi-purpose liquid glue with a little sponge wedge. So this is um, just a little craft sponge. Stampin' Up! used to sell these, but they don't sell them anymore. But you can get them in um, craft supply stores. And I just cut, they were circular, so I just cut them into a quarter wedge. And then I use this one for glue. So I'm going to be using the glue dabbing technique. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of glue onto my silicon craft sheet. And I love the silicon craft sheet because the glue won't stick to it. Like I've got glue on here from earlier when I was um, creating the original project and I can just rub that glue off. It just rubs off beautifully. Um, you can wash these silicon craft sheets as well in the um, sink with some 
um, dishwashing soap to remove any excess glue that might be a little bit more stubborn. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our glue sponge. We're going to smear that a little bit to make that a bit of a thinner sort of film. We don't want it too heavy. Hey, Robin, how are you going? Great to have you with us. And we are simply just going to dab this all over the back of our piece. Now you've got to keep your, your piece that you're applying the glue to, you've got to keep that nice and still because you don't want it to move around and get icky glue on the front. You can do this with small die cut pieces as well using this same um, sponging technique. There we go. All right, so the liquid glue does cause the, um, actually I'll keep that out, it does cause the vellum to curl a little bit but once you adhere that down onto your cardstock it'll go flat again so we're just going to line up my corners now even though you've got the liquid glue on there because we've dabbed it on rather than applied it straight from the bottle um, you don't kind of get the wiggle time like you do if you're using it straight from the bottle because it's applied in more of a um, um Sort of a, a thicker application so you kind of want to try and get it lined up as best as you can all right but if you don't get those two layers lined up exactly it doesn't matter too much because we're putting it down onto a white a piece of designer series paper that's got like a white base so it won't be too noticeable if it doesn't line up exactly but we want it sort of close enough and then if there's any bubbles you can just smooth them out and don't forget, we are putting our tiger over the top as well. So um, there we go. So there that piece is um, ready to go. Now, the reason that I did that was because if I had of just put the, um, I'll grab a piece and just show you. Let me just, I'll just take out a piece of the design of the, sorry, shimmer vellum to just show you. got it whoops everything is sticking so this is the same color okay so this is the evening evergreen now you can see if I put these down on the desk you might think it doesn't look too different with the white behind it but oh I've got a little bubble in there but if I were to put this down on top of that designer series paper See how you can see the pattern from the designer series paper coming through there? Okay, and I didn't want that because I really wanted the tiger to stand out. Um, but I still wanted to see the designer series paper around it. So that's why I decided to put the white behind it. And see, now you can still see the beautiful shimmer vellum, but you don't see the designer series paper behind it. So that's why I put it onto a white base. Okay, so there you go. All right, now with this piece, I'm going to adhere this flat. You can choose to mount this up. I am going to be mounting up the Tiger on the 3D um, mounting foam, or as we call them, Stampin' Dimensionals. If you wanted to, you could mount this up as well and have two layers, um, but I'm just going to pop this one down flat. The more layers you do, um, the more you have to pay in postage here in Australia. Um, other countries it might be different, but here in Australia, the thicker the um, the layers, the more you do pay in postage. Oops, what am I doing? I'm not doing that. I'm doing glue. <laughs> I was about to do what I said I wasn't going to do. Um, yeah, so it's good to try and keep your layers, uh, depending if you don't mind paying extra postage, then that's fine. Um, but if you're trying to keep your costs down on postage, then just pop it down flat. All right, so then we're just going to pop that down like so. There we go, just with a nice little, so we've just got a little border. The border is not even, but that's okay because we're doing lots of layer upon layer. And then we're going to take our tiger and we're going to put some dimensionals onto the back of the tiger. This is where I wanted to add my dimensionals. Onto our tiger, we're going to pop him up to be sitting up off that card base there we go I might just pop a little one down there I've got a little off cut here just pop a little off cut down there on his legs so that he's well supported and 
might pop one down there on his tummy as well there we go all right so we'll just then remove the backing from the dimensionals so these are double-sided adhesive foam they're called Stampin' Dimensionals and they come in the regular size, the mini size and then we have the um, foam adhesive sheets as well which they come in an actual uh, square sheet. Well, it's not quite square. It's just a rectangle, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, which is great for die cutting large pieces or um, alphabets and all sorts of things like that. I think in here, in my little container... I've got, I keep all my little scrappy bits too. There's my minis. Oh, there's a portion of a sheet. <laughs> That's not a full sheet. That's a portion of one of the sheets if you want to use them in a larger piece or cut them to size. Um, and then we've also got them, I've got bits and pieces in here. We've also got them in black as well. They come in a black multi-pack, which is great for if you are adhering or mounting up um, dark colors and they come in a pack with the the regular size and the minis as well and again they've got the double-sided paper on them so when you take that away you can see that they are actually black so i'll just pop that paper back on that little mini yeah so they're great for dark colors so lots of choices there and then of course too there also is the um, adhesive foam strips which are great for shaker cards. They're a little bit higher in dimension um, than the standard dimensionals but they are great for if you um, are doing shaker cards or you want that little bit of a little bit more height in dimension. All right so now we need to stamp our sentiment for our tiger. He looks very relaxed there doesn't he our little tiger. So let me bring in, I'm just going to bring in a little piece of scrap paper today. I always have scrap pieces of paper laying around. Um, usually I have my mini grid paper out, which I use when I'm filming. But um, I think I've dumped all of my catalogs on top of it. So <laughs> this was handy. So let's just use this today. We're going to stamp our sentiment in Evening Evergreen Classic Stampin' Ink from our Classic Stampin' Pad. And again, just to remind you, I'm using the Beauty of Friendship um, photopolymer stamp set. And this one is carrying over into the new annual catalog. And I'm going to just use the Thinking of You because I think that's a really great sentiment to use for lots of different occasions or even when um, we're just sending a card just because. I think Thinking of You really can be used um, yeah, for lots of different reasons. So we'll just ink that up. So we're just tap, tap, tapping. Um, now, usually I stamp my image first and then I die cut it, but I pre-die cut a piece to make it a bit quicker. But let's see if I can get it straight. If not, then I'll have to, oh, let's see. No, it's a little bit wonky. Okay, we'll have to do it from scratch. I thought I might be uh, a little bit clever today and save myself some time. But it seems that I need to... Um, stamp it first and die cut it. I'm just having a look to see. I thought I had some more scrap white out, which I don't. I'll just get, grab a piece of um, white paper, I mean cardstock. There we go. I always have plenty of scraps of white cardstock because I all this is what I use them for. I use them for Stamping sentiments, um, stamping smaller images, and then die cutting. So never throw away your scraps, especially with the basic white. All right, so we'll give that stamp a quick clean on our Simply Chamois. This is another great um, tool in my craft room. So this is a Simply Chamois, and it is double sided it looks much nicer on the other side because I've tried to keep I have used it a little bit but not too much but I try and just use one side at a time and then once when one side becomes really really stained and inky then I flip it over but you can just um, rinse these under um, running water and just rinse out the surface ink they will stain up a little bit but they still clean your stamps beautifully look at that that's nice and clean yep beautiful and clean and then, um, yeah, you just keep using them. So I keep mine in a clear stamp case. 
which um, can be purchased as well from the annual catalog. They come in a pack of four and I just find them really great. Mine one's a little bit scungy. It's got bits of glue and things on it. I've had this one for a really long time and I just printed a little cover for it. But um, they're great for actually keeping them in. But if you don't have these cases, you can just keep your chamois in a Ziploc bag or something like that or a, um, a takeaway food container or anything, anything like that. All right, so I will bring in my mini stamp and cut and emboss machine to die cut that label and I'll have to pull in my die. So these are the stitched rectangles again and I'm going to use that um, narrow long one and I'll line that up. You can take that scrap paper away. Can line that. I feel like I'm rushing today. I feel like I'm talking really fast and I'm rushing. I don't know why. I've got plenty of time. I don't need to rush. <laughs> oh. I think I'm just trying to be quick today. I think that's what it is. There we go. All right. So I like to just use a little bit of washi tape to keep my, um, my die lined up, especially when you're cutting a sentiment. And then I'm going to pop it into my mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. This is a great tool to have as well. Um, nice and compact to keep on your desk. Great for travel. If you haven't seen it before, let me just show you. So the side platforms fold up. So you have this nice little compact machine. You've got rubber stoppers on the bottom to help it from moving, although it is a, a fairly lightweight machine, so you do need to hold on to it when you are um, rolling through your dies because it will move a little bit. And my surface is a little bit slippery too, so... It comes with the plates that you need to get started, including embossing plates for the 3D embossing folders that fit through the mini and your standard embossing plates. Mine, as you can see, are very well loved and well used and you can buy replacement plates um, as you need them. They are considered a consumable because they do get cut up over time and when they become really, really bad and um, chopped up, you will probably need to replace them. But depending on how often you're using them, I'm using mine all the time because I'm filming and I'm also um, doing classes and things like that. So I probably use mine more than most of you, um, unless you're a demonstrator who runs classes. But anyway, but it comes with everything that you need. So um, yeah, so then you just need your dies or your embossing folders. So for the thin dies, we're going to use our base plate number one. And we're going to use our number two plates, our clear plates. So I'm going to pop one on the bottom. So that's our number two plate on the bottom. Then I'm going to pop my die in. Now, because this is a die that has a, um, a straight edge, I'm going to pop it in that way and at a little bit of an angle to help those rollers just catch that to take it through. Because otherwise, if I fed it in that way through the machine, you've got a long straight edge and sometimes it makes it hard for the rollers to um, grab onto that and it will create like a speed bump, like you'll get a real thump with your machine. But if you put it at a slight angle, it makes it much easier for the machine to feed it through. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'll put it at a bit of an angle and then I'm going to pop, whoops, there we go, my other number two plate on top. Now my plates are a bit grotty, I have to say. They do need a good clean. Hang on a minute, I'm going to give this one a rub off in my into my bin because what happens is all these little grooves where you've cut does get little bits of card stocks caught in them so it is good to give them a clean you can even clean these again in the sink with a bit of dishwashing detergent and I do do that from time to time I haven't done it on these ones for a while um, but it will keep your your plates nice and clean so then it doesn't mark your cardstock when you're feeding it through your machine and then you just simply crank it through with the handle and you'll see I'm holding on to the top handle as well to support the machine as I turn the handle to feed that through and there we go so let's take that die off or we'll take the washi off now in our new annual catalog that's coming we are going to have magnetic 
plates, which will be awesome. There'll be magnetic a mag magnetic plate for the mini machine. Oops, I tore my washi. I'll throw that out. There's also going to be a magnetic plate for the large stamp and cut and emboss machine or the standard size. And so that'll be great because that'll help to hold our pieces in place so we won't need to use washi tape. So that'll be really good. Now look at all this mess. I've got all these little scrappy bits of paper that have come off my plates. <laughs> I really have to clean my plates. All right. And then we'll just um, ease that out very carefully of our die so that we don't tear our piece. Actually, where's my bone folder? I like to use my bone folder to do this. There we go. And just ease that out very carefully. There we go. Because these, um, the stitched dies, um, they do tend to bite into your cardstock because they're sort of... Um, almost like doing a deep embossing of that stitched image. So it can sort of get a little bit stuck in there. So just as you saw me do, just very gently prise that out. Um, and then you get that beautiful stitched finish. It's just because that sort of wants to bite into the cardstock. There we go. So that looks a lot better, a lot more straight than my first one. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to pop a few dimensionals onto the back of that piece and then we can adhere that to our card front. There we go. So one, two, three. So I haven't asked, does anybody have this paper? Hey Robin, how are you going? Great to see you here. We've got two Robins on here today. We've got Robin F and Robin A. <laughs> it's great to have you both with us. Um, oh, you weren't expecting me to be on here today, Robin F. Yeah, I wasn't sure myself actually until, until this morning when I got up and I thought, will I, won't I? And I thought, yeah, why not? There we go. So we're just going to attach that over the top of our um, banner there. Um... And there we go. And now we just need to add our bling. So again, if you missed the beginning of my um, my video today, my Facebook Live today, feel free to go back and watch the beginning because I talked about some of these products that are retiring. And um, we've also got the prices in there for you. Do you know what? This time I think I'm going to go the opposite corner because we've got a bit more space up here. Oops. Helps if we put that straight because it is a square embellishment. So we want to put that straight. There we go. Um, yeah, because some of these products that I'm using today are actually on special and they're retiring. So they're going to be gone soon. Okay, so we just line up these embellishments. So these embellishments are going to be gone soon too. They're still available at the moment, but they are retiring. And they're going to be gone really, really soon. So I'm surprised they haven't been snapped up yet, actually. I thought these ones would be snapped up really soon. And these are our gorgeous in colours that are retiring too. Very sad to see some of these in colours go. So there we go. So there is our finished card. So that was pretty quick and easy, wasn't it? There's our original one with a different tiger. Um, so we've got a walking tiger and a relaxing tiger. So now we've got two beautiful cards that we can send out to people. So there you go. So that was nice and quick and easy, wasn't it? All right. So what I will do now is I will tip the camera back up to my face um, so that I can tell you just a few more things and then let you get on with your evening. So if you bear with me while I cover up my camera, here we go. All right, we'll do a little flippity flip. Okay, and I'll just get this all lined back up for you. Oh, excuse the squeakiness of the stand and my lights as well. The um, <laughs> so you probably wonder what that sound is on my lights, that crinkly sound. I actually have, um, this is one of my, my hacks in the craft room. So my lights are desk lamps that I got from Ikea. 
that have um, an extendable arm on them so I can move them around from my desk to my face and, and vice versa. But they're very, very bright and they're very um, close to me. So because of the situation of my desk, that's kind of where I need to have them. So in order to dull them down a bit, I've actually got baking paper across the front of the lamp. Um, so that's a little hack for you. If your lights are too bright, you can pop a little bit of baking paper across the front because of course the baking paper won't burn. You've got to be careful what sort of paper you put on them because you don't want something that could catch fire. Um, yeah, so sometimes when I move my lights, I accidentally um, touch the paper and that's that crinkling sound that you can hear. One day I should take a photo and show you what they look like. They look pretty daggy actually, but, um, but they're very effective. They work really well. <laughs> so, so that's, that's that. Um, uh, oh, Robin Falang says, looks good. Haven't used mine yet. Feeling inspired. Oh, that's fantastic, Robin. So there we go. So we've got both of those. This paper is gorgeous. And I have to say, um, too, that I haven't utilized it as much as I should have. Um, but it's beautiful. But look how beautiful those cards turned out. So they're really, it's really an easy layout. You saw how quickly I put that together. But it's so effective, isn't it? And it's just a great way of using your beautiful designer series paper. And you can do, you can use that layout for, um, any designer series paper and any stamp set as well. It's just very simple layout um, that you can use. So there you go. So I hope you like both of them. Which one's your favorite? Do you like, I know they both look the same, but do you like the, um, the tiger that's standing up or the tiger that's sitting down? I know the layout's exactly the same, so perhaps you don't have a favorite. I think I like the one that's standing up. I think I like that one. He looks like he's walking, this one. <laughs> the other one's looking very relaxed though. <laughs> so yeah, so get your paper out, use your paper. Um, if you would like some more paper, remember that a lot of our designer series papers from the current annual catalog that is retiring um, is on special at the moment. So get it while it's on special stock up oh fran like number two with the the tiger that's lying down he looks very relaxed doesn't he <laughs> um oh helen says she loves the cards thanks helen i'm glad that you feel inspired robin so grab out your tiger paper your big cat wild no what do they call it wild cat wild cat paper and um and crank out some cards i can't wait to see what you create um Robin likes the standing tiger. Yes, yes. Oh, you're welcome, Robin. You're welcome. Very simple. Yeah, very simple layout, but effective. And I think just because you do those different layers and you've got the cardstock there breaking up the pattern papers, I think that makes a difference too. Because if you just had all of these patterns, like it would be too much. But just adding that banner sort of breaks up the, the patterns a little bit. And then you've got that shimmer vellum. If you didn't have shimmer vellum, you can just use colored cardstock there instead. Um, yeah. And I usually put my sentiments. It's funny because I usually always put my sentiments down the bottom here. That's kind of, well, often. If I'm doing a card like this kind of layout, I would normally put my sentiment down there. But I had a bit of space up here that needed filling. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to put it up there. So yeah, just changing it up a little bit. So there you go. Oh, you like the second one, Fran, this one. Fran likes this one with the tiger sitting down. Yeah, he's nice and nice and relaxed, isn't he? That's how we should be today. It's a public holiday. <laughs> Robin likes the standing one. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Rose. You like the laying down tiger? Yeah, everyone's got a favorite. There you go. There you go, everyone likes a different one. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for being with me today. Um, remember that we only have, I'm just reaching it, we only have a couple more weeks of the last chance product um, sale happening um, for all of those retired products that are going. A lot of them are discounted up to 50%. And as I said to you, I told you all of the prices of these ones today, the paper is discounted um, at 50%. It's only $10 for a pack of paper. So if you don't already have this paper, but you like the cards I made today, grab a pack of that paper. It's called Wildcats. 
um, and Amber put the details with the code in the comments. So scroll back through the comments and find that. I'll also add it to the um, details of this video as well to make it easier for you to find it. So check that out. Check out what else is available. There's lots of other designer series papers that's available, stamps and dies, embellishments, ribbons. You can never have too many embellishments and ribbons. So everyone knows I love ribbon and bling on my cards. <laughs> Very rarely do I do a card without ribbon and bling. And again, remember too that um, if you would like to join my team, I'm happy for you to get in contact with me and ask me any questions that you would like to know about joining. Um, and one thing I didn't mention too is that there's no lock-in period. So if you do decide to join um, and take advantage of the, the starter kit, which is the best value in the catalogue, may I say, um, and take advantage of that 20% discount as well, then if you decide that it's not for you and you want to go back to being a customer, there's no problem. There's no exit penalties or anything like that. You just stop ordering as a demonstrator and go back to being a customer. The other thing is too, there is no pressure to sell. So a lot of my team members, they just join for the stamping community and for the discount and I love having them. And we have a great time together in our team or as I like to call our creative community, we have a lovely time together. We get together every month um, and we have, um, I catch everyone up on the latest Stampin' Up! news and then we have some creative time together and it's lots of fun. And then we have Stampin' Up! events which we join in together as well which is super fun um, for those that want to attend those too. So there's many, many advantages of being part of the Stampin' Up! community. So feel free to ask me any questions. Well, I'm going to leave it there for today. Thank you all so much again for being with me today. And um, I hope you have a fantastic week. And I look forward to seeing you all again next Monday at 4 o'clock Australian Eastern Standard Time. Until then, happy crafting everyone. Bye.